Marty Schwartz here with Marty Music, and I'm so excited to have my guitar teacher back on the channel. My guitar teacher's name, Chris Sherland. He taught me so much. I'm so grateful to him. Uh, he was my college guitar teacher. I, I teach you guys so many of the fundamentals that he taught me. So I'm really excited to have him here back for another video. He's going to talk about what a key is. What is a key? And he's going to give you his professor spiel on it. Also, please, if you guys haven't yet, be sure to check out Chris's YouTube channel. There's a link for it below, so check that out. And without further ado, Chris Sherlin, what is a key? Hey, everybody. Uh, how's it going? I'm Chris. Um, Marty invited me back to do a little music theory work with you today. Marty, thanks so much for having me back. Like Getting in front of the giant audience that is Marty Music is, is a thrill and an honor for me. Um, and bringing a little bit of what I do to your audience is, is, a, is a pleasure, so thank you very much. Uh, Marty invited me back to do a little work on what is a key? How do you define what a key is? And if you're a fan of this channel, which I'm sure you are, uh, Lindsay's done some tremendously cool stuff on defining chords, the Nashville system. Marty's touched on it as well. But I'm gonna give you my take on how to build a key. How is a key actually built? and then what chords are created in that key. Um, and I'm gonna show it to you in a way, we're gonna use bar chords to just put it sort of like project it on the neck so you can use it in any key, you can move it around. Um, the good news is that there's very little information to sort of figure out and the pattern is very consistent. And once you sort of get it, you've got it for every key. We're gonna be in the key of A today using the A major scale. The A major scale, any major scale, is the fabric of the key that it is. In other words, the A major scale defines all the notes that are used to build all the chords in the key of A. It's the same with any major scale. That is the fabric. Those seven notes are sort of the DNA, the building blocks of the key. Um, okay, so let's just zoom in and get started. Okay, let's get started. We're going to find all the notes in a key. This is going to create a pattern that's replicatable and transposable anywhere on the neck. We're going to be using the key of A today. Here are the frets for that. On the E string, it's 5-7. On the A string, it's 4-5-7. And then on the D string, it's 4-6-7. That's our major scale. We're going to number these notes simply one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we're back to the back to the A. That's an octave. That's the eighth note. These seven notes define everything in the key of A. We're going to harmonize the scale. And what harmonizing means is sort of like harvesting all the chords we can build from those seven notes. And when we do that we won't have arrived at all of the chords that are in the key of A. And the cool news here is that those seven notes define everything. They are the entire fabric. And when we get our pattern of chords together, that pattern is the same for every single major key. You can just use the pattern and move it wherever you need it. Okay, let's get started. First, I'm just gonna talk about harmonizing for a moment. I'm not gonna harmonize the whole thing. 
I think it's important when you understand a concept to sort of go get the information yourself. But here's how we arrive at the chords in the key. We use the major scale, and we play it in a very specific way, which is three notes in a row using every other note, and you repeat that for every single note in the scale, and I'll show you how that works. Let's just say, for example, we just use the first five notes of the scale. One, two, three, four, five. If I play every other note, three notes in a row, it looks like that. That's an arpeggio of an A chord, right? Because I haven't played this note. That's the two. I've used the one, the three, and the five. First note, the third note, the fifth note. So I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but I'm going to show you how that works. Here it is from the root. Here it is from the second. Here it is from the third. Fourth. Fifth. Sixth. Seven. The seventh note is, of course, the last one. And we're back to A. So that pattern is repeatable for any major scale. There's nothing different about the next scale up. There's nothing different about G or C or D. Those patterns, those mathematical geometric patterns are the same. When you harmonize the scale, I'm just going to show you what chords it produces. And I'm going to show them to you with bar chords on, with the root on the E or the root on the A string, just so that we can you know, sort of take information we already have and glue it all together to show us what chords are available in a single key. So here's how it goes. The first chord is always a major chord. And again, we're talking about major keys here. Minor keys are a bit of a different story, but this is really very fundamental information. Here's our one chord, our major chord in the key of A. The two chord is always minor. The three chord is always minor too. How do we find that? We're gonna to switch to the A string now, watch. One, two, three. Just put a minor chord there. Just gonna review one major, two minor, three minor. The four chord is always major. One, two, three, four. Five chord is also always major. One, two, three, four, five. The six chord is always minor. We don't have a bar chord that fits uh, the D string, so I'm going to take this down an octave. Watch. Here's my sixth chord, always minor. So let's just review one major, two minor, three minor, four major, five major, six minor. Good way to think about this is six is always a step and a half below the root. Now the seven chord is interesting. It's a diminished chord. There's no real bar chord for this, so let me, and let me explain this to you. I'm using my thumb over the top. It's kind of a good technique to have if you don't have it already, and this chord forces you to get it. This is a G-sharp diminished chord, and here's how it goes. Thumb on the top on the fourth fret, D string, sixth fret, G string, four, B string, three. The good news is that this chord's not used extremely often in modern music, so given that it's hard to play, that's sort of a relief. But your seven chord is diminished, and then you're back to the one. Okay, I'm gonna review all those. One chord major, two chord minor, three chord minor, four chord major, five chord major, six chord minor, seven diminished, So we've hung bar chords in this pattern, so they're really sort of close to the root, and they're easy to see, and they're bar chords, major and minor bar chords. This should be in our vocabulary already. This should be easy for us to sort of manage. Here's the great news. That same bundle of chords, that same sort of conglomeration, if you will, is the same for any key. Let's just look at it, let's say, in the key of C. One chord major, two minor, three minor, four major, five major, six, remember, it's a step and a half below the root, 
7 diminished. Back to major. Same for the key of G, let's say. Sorry. Okay, so every single key works exactly like that. Like I demoed at the very end there, you could be in the key of G or the key of D, and all those chords in that order, they, it all remains consistent, which is really, really handy. Um, the thing about music theory is that it's, it, it is complex. It takes a little work to get it under your hands and in your head, but once you start to, to do stuff like this and really understand what's going on, it builds on itself really easily. Like when you gain knowledge and you've got a solid foundation, it builds really quickly. So I would highly recommend if you're interested in music theory at all, that you practice this kind of stuff and look into it and see what's under the hood and sort of like get curious about how does this work? Why is the C sharp minor, uh, the, the third chord in the key of A, why is that? Like get curious about it and start tearing it apart. Okay, I hope this is helpful. Um, Marty, I just want to say again, thank you so much for inviting me on the channel. Um, it's really a great privilege, um, and uh, I always appreciate you uh, inviting me back and having me on. All right, everybody, see you next time. Hey, Chris. All right. Thank you for the uh, wisdom and the instruction. I hope it helped you guys out there. Uh, once again, be sure to check out and uh, subscribe to Chris's YouTube channel. I got a link below for that. And if there's other uh, cool topics like this that you would like to see, let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't yet, I appreciate you subscribing here to the channel Marty Music. So thanks again, you guys. Thank you, Chris. And uh, hope to see you guys later.